How's it going everyone? I am Jeremy Alexander and welcome to my very first Construct 2 Academy tutorial. Very excited to be here. What we're going to be learning today is how to make a dynamic projectile system. Now, what do I mean by dynamic projectiles and am I just making stuff up? No, a projectile, as you know, is a missile, a rocket, a bullet that's fired from a weapon. And a dy the dynamic part about that means that the projectiles are constantly changing. So how can we build a system that works that way? Well, what we're going to do is we're going to build a lot of controls for our character. So we're going to have a platformer type game where our character has a weapon. And this weapon is going to be a sprite that has a bunch of other weapons in it. So we can have a, our starting sprite as a pistol and we can have our next sprite as a machine gun, our next sprite as a rocket, our next sprite as a minigun, the list goes on and on. You can have as many as you can think of. You can have a shotgun, something that does some cool projectile effect. But the point is, we're able to take our code up front and then later on when we need to make other types of bullets we can just copy paste tweak parameters and call it a day and that's what's really important because once you set up this back end stuff that's when it becomes really fun to actually make this projectile system so a further example on that before we get started is if we have our pistol and our pistol shoots a bullet very slowly say we want our machine gun to shoot the exact same bullet but it's a machine gun, so it's going to shoot a lot faster, and it might have different screen shake settings. It might have different knockback settings. All we have to do is tweak a few parameters, and we're done. That's how easy it is. Of course, we can swap out the sprite altogether, but it's very easy for us to just change three parameters and have a completely different weapon type. It's going to be a completely different experience for your game. So I hope you're ready, because we're going to jump right in. Okay, so I had to jump ahead a little bit just so I could get everything done. What I did was I added two behaviors to our player. I added a platform behavior and a bound to layout behavior. Now, if you look at our platform behavior and our parameters, our max speed is now 100, so he's a lot slower. Our jump strength is 300, and our jump sustain is 5, just so it kind of pauses when he gets to the height of its jump for 5 milliseconds. So that is pretty much all I did to our player. Very basic stuff. Hopefully you know how to do that. Let's actually look inside our player here because I have two things that I did. One, I have an animation here for idle, which is also very basic. And 0 and 2 are the same exact frame. And 1 is just a squished frame of our player. So now when it's standing still, it should play this animation. So it kind of looks a little more lively. I called it ID idle with the prefix of ID. So in case in the future we want to just do some dynamic animation, we prefix it with ID underscore. Okay, so the next thing, and this is the most important part, let's go to our origin point or our image point. So our origin point for our player is at the bottom, but I added another one for our gun. Now this is where all of our guns are going to be primarily. I'm going to add a way for us to kind of maneuver it if we need it to go up or down, left or right. But when we actually want to stick it to the player, this is where we're going to be. I put it to the right. You can put it closer, but I put it right here, and this is going to work for my gun. So let's go take a look at my gun. So make sure you have that image point and just add a new one. Okay, so let's take a look at our gun, and let me add that in. I had drawn a sprite at 10 by 10, and it didn't really turn out to be 10 by 10, so I cropped it, and now it's 8 by 7. Really doesn't matter what size. And our origin point is somewhere in the center here. You could put it to the left. It really also doesn't matter too much. And then our bullet, this is what does matter. You have to have an image point for your bullet. So where would you like your bullet to spawn? Well, if you had a different drawing and maybe you had two uh, ways for your bullet to shoot, then you could put more than one image point. That's also an option. But right in here, I just have our image point for our bullet on the right side since our gun is facing that way. I've also called it ID pistol. So in the future, when we add our ID machine gun, we're just adding it right now, there we go. So now we are pretty much ready to start building our list of weapon types. And our ID machine gun can be any size. I wouldn't make it 250 by 250 because we want it to be relative to our player, but this could be 10 by 10. And then we can just draw out a machine gun. Here, I'll do that really quickly so that way we have it. So let's go to our machine gun or our pistol here. And let's just kind of extend it. So I'm going to kind of copy this, and I'm just going to draw like this. This is an amazing drawing, and I'm going to hold down Control. That way I can get some kind of something going on. There we go. Man, our machine gun looks so good. Okay, so this is obviously not the best drawing in the world, but at least it's something. So there's our machine gun. It looks pretty cool. Let's go to our machine gun now, and let's hit Crop, so that way it just kind of crops it a little bit. So now it's 10 by 8 doesn't really matter. 
And let's take a look here at our origin. Let's go to, let's put it to the left just because, and then let's add a new image point for our bullet. And let's put that to the right. So now we have pretty much the same exact setup for our pistol, but this is our next level gun. So all I did was I called this object weapon and there is nothing else on it. So that is that. Now let's actually add this to our player. And what we need to do next is we need a way to actually add this or actually, you know what? Let's make our collision. So double click, make a new sprite. Let's resize it to 10 by 10. Let's zoom in and let's call this or let's make this a red color with an alpha of 55. And let's exit out after we paste that in. Just kidding. Let's go to our origin point and let's quick assign this to the top left. Let's then do this. Let's stretch this out. Let's stretch this out the entire window size. So when you see the end of the dotted line, let's call this our object collision. And that way our player has something to land on, which is very important. So let's add a behavior to it and let's give it a solid behavior. Okay. So now our platform should work perfectly fine. Let's hit save. And let's, here, let's hit play real fast so we can see what's happening. So we have our player, and there we go. I've also set up the controls for our player to move left and right, so let's take a look at that. Let's go to our event sheet, and now you can see that every single second the game is running, I'm setting the animation to idle, and then if it's moving and the left arrow is down, we're setting it to mirrored because it is facing right. So if it's facing right, then it's going to be not mirrored. So left, it's going to flip right it's not going to flip so now we actually have to do the same thing for our gun because we want this to one be pinned and two we want it to flip so let's add the action go to our weapon let's actually set the mirrored and let's just hit okay and let's control click to copy it and let's set to not mirrored so now it's going to flip with our player but it's not going to actually stick to our player now one option is you could add the behavior of pin but I don't really find that way as reliable as I would like it to be. So in every single tick, what we're going to do is we're going to set our weapon, our object weapons position. So type in set position, set position to object underscore player, because that's what I called it, image point X. And now we have an image point X called gun. If you remember, that's exactly where our gun was going to be. So then we're going to copy and paste this and we're going to change our Y image point to image point Y same exact image point and hit OK. That's going to happen every single tick. That way it's going to follow it just as it would if it was pinned. So let's hit play on that and let's see what's going on now. OK, great. So now it's actually flipping with our player and it's actually sticking to our player. But you know, you can kind of see here that it's not uh, close to our player and we could try to move it around and see if that messes it a little bit. I mean, I'm not sure if that's going to. It didn't. So in this case, double click, zoom in a lot, and let's put our origin back over here. And we'll have to mess around with the machine gun to see if it's going to do the same thing. And let's see what happens. There we go. So all I had to do in that case was I put the actual origin point to the center of the handle, and then it pinned it straight to where I wanted it, right next to our player's face on our gun image point. Okay, great. So now everything is working. Let's make this bad boy fire. So here's how we're going to do this. We're going to go to our player. We're going to go to our instance variables and we're going to add three instance variables. The first one is going to be is underscore shooting and we're going to hit OK. The next one is going to be web underscore rate and we're going to change the initial value to be 0.1. And then the final instance variable is going to be web underscore type. And we're going to change this type to be text. And the initial value is going to be pistol in all caps. And we're going to hit OK. And actually, you know what? I'm going to describe these for you. So in our description, is our player shooting? Let's find out if we are holding down the shooting button. Now, of course, if we had ammo, that would be that would come into play as well. I don't actually see the description here, but you know it's there. Uh, our weapon rate is going to be our rate of fire for how fast this projectile fires or shoots. There we go. Let's not be redundant. And our weapon type is going to be the actual weapon to spawn or call, whatever you want to do. So now we have our is shooting weapon rate and weapon type, but let's go into our event sheet here and let's actually program for that. Now to do this, we're going to need to make a new object. So let's double click on our layout. Let's 
type in function and let's add this to our project. It'll take five seconds. So while we're doing that, let's go to our event sheet. Now we need a way for our player to trigger our gun to actually have it fire a projectile. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to add an event, a keyboard event. Key is down and I'm going to pick X. Since we're using the arrow keys, it'll be nice to have it on the other side of the keyboard. If the X key is down, now I'm going to hit C to add another condition here. And I'm going to say the same thing, but for key pressed, or if X is pressed, not C, if X is pressed. And to change this to an OR statement, all we have to do is select the event, right click, make OR block. Okay, so now if X is pressed or it's held down, then we are going to be ready to shoot our gun. So here's how we're going to do this. We're going to hit B on this event to make a sub event. And we're going to say if... Now we need to find our player, so go to our player, and we need to compare the instance variable we just made, in particular the is shooting. If is shooting equals zero, which we know it does, then we're going to be able to shoot. So what are we going to do? Let's actually make our functions first. So let's double click, let's make a function. Now a function is just kind of a, a folder in code, it's just a way to organize your code, and eventually, if you wanted to, you can return parameters. So we're going to be doing that for our screen shake, but for right now, we don't need to do that. We're going to call two functions. Our function is going to be our web timer, camel case, and I'm going to copy and paste, and I'm going to make another function called web type. Now our weapon type function is going to be very, very important. Our timer is important too, because this is going to handle our rate of fire, but our weapon type is actually going to be our constant change, the dynamic part to our shooting system. So now that we have these two functions ready to go, let's go back to our is shooting uh, nested event here and let's add to it. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to call our function weapon type. So let's say call function and let's type in weapon type. Then what we're going to do is we're going to copy and paste and we're going to call our weapon timer. Now we need one variable in between and it actually doesn't really matter where you place this variable because all of this is going to happen in a split second. We're going to add the action to our player to actually set the value of is shooting to one. So we're going to sandwich this in the middle of these two functions. So now what's going to happen is the player is going to hold down X or it's going to press X and then it's going to check is our player shooting is does is shooting equal zero. If it does, it's going to call the function weapon type. Then it's going to set this to one, meaning that all of this will no longer be ran. So it's only going to be ran once. And then it's going to call the function weapon timer. Now this weapon timer is going to actually handle our rate of fire. So here's how it's going to do this. What it's going to do is it's going to say on weapon timer, add the action of player, set the value. Actually, you know what? Go back. <laughs> Forget I did that. Go to system and type in wait. This is going to wait a number of seconds before running our next action. In this case, it's going to say object underscore player dot web rate. So now it's going to wait 0.1 seconds to fire off the next, uh, li the next action, the next line of code. And in this case, it's going to be setting our is shooting back to zero. So let's copy it and let's set is shooting back to zero. So now we can shoot again. So it's going to wait however long our rate of fire is, and then it's going to let us shoot again. So that's all our weapon timer is. It is very important though, because this is gonna actually handle our bullets here. So now let's actually look at our weapon type. And our weapon type means we need to have a bullet. So let's actually hit B on the keyboard and let's make this sub event. This sub event is going to be for our pistol. So let's go to our player. Let's compare the instance variable of weapon type. And you can see the actual weapon to spawn. And let's say quotation marks, if our weapon type equals pistol, which we know it does by default, then what's going to happen? Well, it's going to need to spawn our pistol bullet. So let's go do that. Let's go to our layout. Let's make a new sprite. Let's make this one four by four. So really, really small. And let's just kind of make it square. Actually, let me put my alpha back up. And let's go all the way down here, something like this. And let's go to our yellow. Okay, a little too big. There we go. And can I erase the corners here and make this look a little bit more circular? I can. There we go. So now we have our bullet and this is going to be our pistol bullet and our machine gun bullet. So let's exit out of that. Let's call this OBJ bullet and let's give it the behavior of bullet because it has to act like a bullet. So let's give it the behavior of bullet and let's give it another behavior of destroy outside layout. 
Okay, so let's go to our bullet behavior. We can exit out of this. Let's go to the bullet behavior. Let's change the speed because our pistol is going to be slow. So let's change the speed to 100. And I think that's all we had to do there. So let's put this outside of our layout so it's going to be destroyed, but this way it's in our project so it's not going to be missing it. And let's go back to our event sheet here. So our weapon type equals pistol. What we want to do is we want to add the action to our player to spawn another object. And in this case, we want it to spawn our bullet. And now we could designate a layer if we had more than one layer. But in particular, we want to spawn the bullet on our image point of... You guessed it, bullet, because this is coming from our, actually, sorry, uh, this needs to come from our gun. So let's actually go, let's change it, uh, let's hit done, let's right click, replace object with, uh, pick the object to be replaced, player to weapon, there we go. So our weapon should spawn the bullet on image point bullet. So if we go back to our weapon here, and we zoom in, and we go to our image point, there we go. I got it correct. There we go. So let's hit save. Now we did a lot of stuff. So I hope that this made sense to you. Uh, if it doesn't, I will gladly go over it. But uh, I will go over it again or I can explain to you in the comments what is going on. But let's hit play and let's see what happens. Usually I like to test things out beforehand. But there we go. All right. Uh-oh. We got a little error there. That's okay. We can fix that really easily. But our pistol is working. It's firing bullets from the correct location. It looks a little funny because of my sprite drawing skills, but that's okay. It looks pretty good. I'm very happy with that. So let's actually fix that one issue with it mirroring. Let's go to our weapon type pistol. So this is just for our pistol. Let's hit B to make a sub event out of our pistol. And let's say if our player is mirrored. So now we can actually say if our player is mirrored, what we want our, what we want to do is actually flip the angle of this bullet 180 degrees. So let's go into our bullet. Let's set the angle to 180 and hit save. So now only if our weapon type equals pistol and only if our player is mirrored will the bullet actually be at 180 degrees. So let's fire this way and now we can fire that way. Awesome. So this is working pretty well, but you can actually see here that this is kind of fast for a pistol. So let's actually slow that down a little bit. And the way we're gonna do that is let's go to our layout, let's click on our player, and let's just change our weapon rate. Now we can make this really fast by going 0.0, .0, 0 0.001 or 0 0.01. And to make it slower, we can say something like 0 0.5. So let's try that out. That might be really slow, but there we go. That's better for a pistol. So that's a little bit slow and you can mess around with that however you would like. But now we actually have a pistol. So let's actually, let's put it to 0.3 because I feel like that's too slow. And let's hit save and let's hit play. Okay, there we go. That's a little bit better for our pistol. And as you add more things to your game, sound effects and maybe a screen shake, this will look a lot better. But let's move forward to our machine gun. So now that we have finally implemented all the things we needed, this is the part where we get to actually have fun. What we get to do now is we get to copy and paste our weapon type pistol and we can change it to our machine gun. So if we equal the machine gun, then what's going to happen? Well, the same exact thing is going to happen. It's going to spawn the same bullet and the same exact mirroring controls are going to happen, but we need to set our weapon rate to actually be faster. So let's add that action. Let's go to our player. Let's set the value of our weapon rate and let's change it from 0.3 now down to 0.1. So only if our weapon type equals machine gun. So how are we gonna do that? We are going to need a way to actually trigger that. Well, here's how I'm gonna do this for now. You can change this later on. You could have so many different things. You could run over an object or you could pick up the ammo pickup and there you go. You change your gun to next the next gun. Uh, let's actually just change it from the get go. So actually, you know what? No, let's, let's just make a keyboard event. Let's say keyboard. If the key is pressed, let's say key uh, B, and yeah, let's say key B. If key B is pressed, just for right now, just for testing purposes, let's set our weapon type. So go into our player, set the value of our weapon type, quotations, machine gun, and let's hit save. So now, from right off the bat here, there we go, all that's happening, but if I hit B, there we go. So now our bullet is kind of going a lot faster, but our sprite didn't change. So we're going to actually have to redo our sprite system a little bit. What we're going to have to do 
is we're going to have to say, actually, first thing is we're going to go into our machine gun. And in addition to setting the rate of fire, we're going to set the animation. So let's actually go to object player. Let's set the animation to ID machine gun. Now, for right now, I'm going to do it this way. But later on, I'm going to put this in our every frame so it's going to happen automatically. So let's hit play and let's see if that changes now. So we're going to shoot our pistol. I'm going to hit B. And now I'm going to shoot this out. Okay, it didn't change. Why did that not change? Or did it change and I just didn't realize? Okay, hold on. It didn't change. Set the animation to ID machine gun. Play from the beginning. Let's actually look at what's happening. So let's actually do this instead. Let's say set it to ID. Okay, I got this. Set this to ID and object player dot weapon type. We're going to put this into our every tick. So what this is saying is every single second, set the ID of the gun to be whatever. Oh, 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 oh. This needs to be the gun, doesn't it? Oh, okay. Hold on. <laughs> that makes a lot more sense now. We need to set the weapon, not the, the player. Let's replace that object. There are no objects that can replace object player. Let's try this again. Let's say object weapon set the animation to ID underscore. There we go. And object player dot weapon type. Okay, now we got this. So every single second, it's also going to set the position of the weapon and set the animation to whatever the weapon type is. So all we have to do now, I was getting confused because it's getting late here. The machine gun has to go into our player and we need to set the value of our weapon type to machine gun. There we go. And we're going to have to do the same exact thing for our pistol in case we go back. So let's copy and paste and let's put this to our pistol. There we go. And let's hit save and let's hit play. So now we're going to shoot our pistol and we're going to hit B on the keyboard. And because this is in every tick, there we go. Our gun changes and so does our rate of fire. Now the same thing happened with our machine gun. So let's go into our weapon and let's zoom in a lot so we can see what's going on. Let's go to our machine gun and let's set our origin point somewhere here in the middle because I think that was working best to our for our pinning so let's shoot our pistol make sure that works let's hit b there we go now this is really working so there are a lot of other things that we need to add to this such as screen shake and sound effects would be really nice and then this effect is going to be huge this isn't going to look as lame as it might at the moment but it's really going to be great in the long run and you can change out your bullet types easily you can do so many other things but i really do hope that i have covered the basics enough that you understand what is going on. And obviously you can also add control variables for ammo, stuff like that. There's a lot more we have to get into, but I think that's enough for now. I went kind of quickly, so I hope I didn't overload you with too much information. You can download the file in the description if you have any questions. Leave a comment and I'll be sure to answer them. But thank you so much for watching my very first Construct 2 Academy tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. Again, my name is Jeremy and I'll see you in the next one.